everybody welcome back to my channel so in today's video I'm going to be testing out pastel pencils for the first time I've never tried out pastel pencils before so in this one it's a new medium for me and I'm gonna see whether I like them or not for this video I'm testing out the Stabilo Carbothello pastel pencils so this is a 60 pastel pencil set and this is the largest of the sets and so here is a closer look at one of the pastel pencils. They each have a grey sort of band at the end and then the rest of the pencil is like the colour that that pastel is. So the pencils are in two layers. There's slightly less pencils on the top layer and then the rest are on the bottom layer. And you also get a few other little things with this set as well. You get a blending stump to blend the pastels and it's a small one so it's great for detail as well. You also get a kneaded eraser which I really like in this sort of drawing to use with the pastel I thought it was really good as you can see I've already used it I'm filming this after I've already done the sort of test and used the pencils and the last thing that you get is a sharpener as well and I was interested to see how this would work because I know pastels are quite difficult to sharpen so I wanted to see if the sharpener that they provided was able to sharpen the pencil without any breakage so anyway, those are all of the pastel pencils. It's a really nice range of colours, you can see, and I really like that there's some really earthy and natural tones, which will be great for skin tones. So if we put that away, let's have a look at the paper that I'm going to be testing out for this video as well. And that is the pastel matte paper. So this is really, really common to use with pastel pencils. When I did my research, loads of people were using this brand. And so this packet came with four different colors. It was like three or four sheets three sheets of each different colour to test out and I thought because I was testing out these papers it would be nice to see all of the different colours they offered and what I really liked about this paper is that it's got this white sort of backing and it was so so thick. So here is the burnt sienna paper this is the one that I'm going to be testing out today but I'm also going to show you the brown here it is it's a bit darker and also they give a black as well as the white so those are all of the colors and what you can tell with the black is that it does have a bit of a sandpapery texture to it which means that the pastel pencils will really be able to grip onto that and so hopefully we can get a lot of layering and um, also between each layer of paper there's a bit of like grease proof tracing sort of paper as well to prevent smudging so that was great so anyway guys, let's get on to testing these pencils out and the very first thing that I did was I created the sketch and I sketched freehandedly onto this using a white pastel pencil so that I could see it over the top of the mid-tone sort of paper. I've seen that a lot of people do their sketch with a lighter like white or light pastel pencil so I thought I would do the same thing because I obviously have no experience with this medium. And so once I've got my sketch in, I just start to build up the shadows and basically just block in all of the colours and get a sort of blocked in stage down before I add the details. So now let's run through some things that I absolutely loved when working with these pastel pencils. So the very first thing is the fact that you can layer light colours over the top of dark colours. So this is something I absolutely love to do, but obviously with coloured pencils, you don't work by adding light colours on top of dark colours. You work where you kind of preserve the light colours and work from sort of light to dark. And so this was a completely different way of working, but it's something that I really like to do. And so that straight away was a massive positive to me. The fact that you could block in all of the really dark shadowed areas, but you still have the option to go over it with a white pencil and it completely show up is something that is a massive plus for me and something that I'm really excited to carry on doing in the future when I use this medium. And another massive positive was the fact that it blends so easily. You don't have to struggle and work hard to blend the pastel into each other it so easily blends and you can lay down a large area of pastel really quickly and blend it out to a completely smooth finish in no time at all and so the fact that you get smooth blending and can layer dark on top of light and then light on top of dark it is just such a nice way to work 
A few other things that I really liked about this as well is the paper. The paper was great. It really took the layers. I didn't have lots of fallout of the pastel and it just held on to all of that pastel, that chalky pastel pencil really well. It wasn't all dusty and just falling off everywhere. It was just so nice and this is really good if you're working in layers like I wanted to do the blocking in stage and then I wanted to add lots more layers to build up that fur texture. So the fact that this pastel pastel matte paper was able to grip onto all of that pastel was really really good. So as you can see quickly right now I am using that blending stump that they provided in the set to actually blend all of that out and as you can see it's a nice soft finish but it's not completely rendered obviously now I'm going to just build on it with even more layers and you can see that it just goes on like a dream and it was really nice you can just keep blending it out or you don't have to blend it. So another thing that I liked is the fact that you can build up the texture like fur in layers. You have the possibility to block in the darkest values and then add highlighted bits of fur on top. And so this provides a really quick way to create realistic looking fur. Whereas if you were to use colour pencil, you can't just do all of the darkest areas and then go and add details with the white pencil on top and get them to show up. But with this, you can, which means that the process was so much faster and you get a much nicer result. And so I feel like this way of working is something that I think beginners would find quite simple because you can go over the top with highlights. You don't have to try and preserve all of them. So if you're a beginner and you're used to painting, for example, if you use oil paints and you want to make a transition to a drawing medium with pencils, then I think this would be a great one for you because it's very similar to working with oil paint where you do blocking in stages and then add the highlights on top and work in layers. It's very similar to using oil paints. So if you like working with oil paints and you're thinking of trying pastel pencils, then I think you would really, really like them. So another thing that I absolutely loved was the colour of the paper. So the fact that it was this mid-tone value meant that it was really easy to judge your values. So to be able to judge how light your highlights needed to be and your shadows. When you have white paper, it can be sometimes hard to judge the values because the white is so bright. But when you have this mid-tone value, you can not only judge the shadows but you can judge the highlights as well and it just makes it so much easier so again if you're a beginner this might be really helpful for you and that's the same with any sort of tone paper that has a mid-tone value it doesn't just have to be this brown color but anything that's more of that mid-tone like gray or brown or burnt sienna like this it will be easier to judge your brightest areas and your darkest areas. So now I want to talk about a few of the things that I didn't like so much about using these pencils. And firstly, probably the main thing is that they are really difficult to sharpen. And that's just a property of pastel pencils, especially some of the softer ones. So these pastel pencils were a bit harder, so they weren't as bad with the breakage and crumbling as softer pastel pencils would have been. But they are still quite difficult to sharpen, especially to sharpen them to a really sharp point. And so with the sharpener that they provided, I used that one and I also tried the other sharpener that I use a lot. And I found that they can be sharpened, but as soon as I go really sharp, it's more likely to break. So I tried not to sharpen it too much, only as much as I needed to kind of get the detail that I wanted. But it can be difficult to sharpen them, especially if you want that really, really fine detail and intricate sort of detail whereas this it wasn't super fine I didn't have the pencil really really sharp it was quite blunt to a certain extent but I'm going to invest in a different sharpener to try and get that really really sharp point and I'm sure you can get loads of sharpeners out there or different tools to sharpen your pastel pencils so it's not a massive negative it's just the property of the pencils themselves and another thing that's a little disappointing is the size of the colour range, only 60 colours and that's the largest set. But that's not a massive deal because you can mix the colours together. But anyway guys, that is it for this test. I really love these pencils, they might even become my favourite medium to work with. If you guys want to see real time tutorial series for drawing animals in loads of different mediums as well as drawing realistic portraits, then I have got so many tutorial series available on my Patreon 
for $5 and $9 patrons. So if you want to learn how to draw realistically step by step, then check out my Patreon. And also if you're new around here and you enjoyed the video, make sure to hit that subscribe button. But I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye everybody.